But who would be with you? today. So we'll be thinking not only of Luke as the writer of the Gospel, but also as a doctor. And our worship this morning has the theme of healing. We'll be including prayer for individuals in our intercessions. But of course, prayer for healing also has a corporate dimension. And as we meet together this morning, we do so in the context of a pandemic, of climate change, of divisions in our society. And as we gather around the Eucharist, we say in effect that we are willing to be part of Christ's death and resurrection, part of his healing in the middle of this context in which we live at present. And as we do that, we in a sense we, we say yes, we are hopeful. And it's hope that we take out with us when we leave our worship this morning. And that hope is based on the reality of forgiveness, both offered and received. So let's hold on to that hope as we turn to our confession now. We say together, 
Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand as we say the glory to God. Glory, glory to God, God in the Christ and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy God, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, and the Lord of the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, you called Luke, the physician, whose praise is in the Gospel, to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the Gospel. Please give your church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for our first reading. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being called out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all, all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Cretans have gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books and above all the parchments. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. You also must be beware of him, for he is strongly opposed by my message. At my defence no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of Praise is fitting. The Lord built up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts of Israel. He, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 
He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make a melody to our God on the lyre. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. According to Luke. After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. 
Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is, th is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person, but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Do be seated. Given Simon a challenge this morning, a whole sermon on a memory stick, which is a PowerPoint, as well as the Google slide presentation that we're working from to lead the worship. So um, thank you very much, Simon, for being a multitasker. I think we'll have the first slide. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, marvellous. Let's pray. Loving God, we pray that as we look at your word and reflect on our own feelings about healing, you would help our faith to rise, our faith in you as a constant Lord, God and Saviour, who wants our wholeness and who wants the best for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So as Christine has said in her introduction, today the Church remembers St Luke, one of the four evangelists who wrote his account of the life of Jesus. Luke's Gospel emphasises the universal nature of God's invitation. His Gospel is packed with stories about money, wealth and the importance of generosity. There's a lot about joy, meals, women and prayer. Jesus is portrayed as a healer and saviour and since the same word in Greek covers both the word healer and saviour, we already get a strong hint that when we consider healing as a topic, we are looking at something very holistic. A bit like the topic mission, which I tackled at one point in a sermon, healing is far too large a theme really to be tackled in one talk, but I'm hoping to offer some starting points that might be pertinent as we live through this pandemic. Healing, sickness, wholeness, health and health services are very much on all our minds at the moment. What can the church say about healing? What do we believe about healing? This is also a question about what sort of God do we worship? Is he good? Does he want our good? Does he want our good now? Or to put it another way, when we come in desperation with an illness or a condition, often the pressing questions going on at some deep level, at least for me, are can God heal? Will God heal? Will God heal me? I normally get stuck on the last one. We'll all have different experiences of healing and most of us won't even agree on how to define the word. I asked two people whose judgment I trust and who have had a lot of experience in the Christian church to give me their initial reactions to the word healing. One was in her 40s, one in her 20s. I asked them if you were going to church and you knew that the theme was healing, what one thing would you want to hear and what would you not want to hear? And that might be a good question for us to ponder a moment. What one thing do you want to hear? And what do you not want to hear? I'm not going to share what they said, but it was clear that they hadn't always had positive experiences 
of being prayed for when there was something wrong with them. One had watched a member of the Bible study group slowly die of cancer, and the other is living with an autoimmune condition that she directly links with church-related trauma. Healing is such a difficult topic. So this is not a theologically thorough overview, but a series of reflections on some photographs that have come to mean a lot to me during the pandemic. I hope this method of showing images and being a bit more personal might be a better fit to a topic that cannot help but be not just theological, but very personal. So the photos you'll see are among the hundred finalists of the Hold Still Portrait Competition hosted by the National Portrait Gallery and publicised by the Duchess of Cambridge. The photos are a chronicle by ordinary people all across the UK of life under lockdown. They show moving shots of healthcare workers, separated relations, children studying at home and parents under strain. I thought they might provide a contemporary backdrop for our reflections on St Luke and the Ministry of Healing. So we're going to have the first one. I've called this the Beloved Physician. <coughs> Luke was known as the Beloved Physician and I thought that was a lovely phrase. And it made me think of our beloved physicians that are in this congregation, even if they're retired. Luke probably never met Jesus, but at the beginning of his Gospel, he explains to someone called Theophilus that since many have undertaken to write an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who were eyewitnesses, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you. So that's how he starts his Gospel. And it struck me that we all want our doctors and consultants to be orderly people, able to give an orderly account of our diagnoses and prognoses. And I kind of sense the nascent scientist, man of method in Luke, if that's not too much of an anachronism. And one thing I find encouraging about thinking about Luke is that he practiced the art of healing as a physician in his day, but he wrote about the miraculous healings that Jesus did and I just wonder what that did to his psyche. It seems like a healthy combination and one we can maintain when we pray for those who are ill. We pray just as much that the healing work of doctors will be inspired, as well as the inner work of peace and wholeness that we seek from God. So this photo is called Happy, and that is H-A in lowercase and P-P-E in capitals, and it's by Imogen Johnson from Liverpool. And she says this about the photo, after a long week looking after a patient, an orthopaedic consultant and his surgical trainee wanted to lift the mood of not only themselves, but their colleagues and patients on the ward. It's easy to forget how much we need our mouths to communicate and convey emotion until there is a mask in front to prevent it. I took this picture to show that our NHS and our nation can still find light in the darkest of times. Keep smiling and be happy. Luke's story of the Christ spills out into the book of Acts as he chronicles the spread of the gospel across the known world. Paul spearheaded this movement, of course, and it would seem that he had a close relationship with Luke. In the epistle we heard, we saw the elderly Paul in prison and in the last days of his life. Everyone has either deserted him or left for another city. Only Luke is with me. I felt it was a rather poignant sentence that struck out for me. It shows us Paul's very human side. Of course, we know Paul dealt in the miraculous, whether exorcisms, visions, or deliverance from deadly snake bites or near-death experiences. Amazing things happened around Paul. But here he is, 
like many today, perhaps simply a bit lonely. This is called At the End of a Shift, and this is by Neil Palmer, who lives in Reading. I don't know if any of you know Neil, he's obviously a very good photographer. So he did this in a studio, and it's a portrait of Tende, a recovery and anaesthetics nurse who was born in Zimbabwe and now lives in Reading. I wanted to portray her care inside, as well as a look of concern and uncertainty that many of us experienced during this pandemic. It's why I chose a lower than normal angle and asked her to look off camera, placing her halfway down in the frame. And we are all mindful, aren't we, that it's been costly for our health workers to offer themselves for the healing of others. Often they have done so while being burdened and stressed themselves. Only Luke is with me. This plaintive sentence made me think about the long nights that Covid sufferers have endured when the presence of one other person is so vital. The Prime Minister spoke about this. It's the night time when you most need someone watching over you and for much more than just medical reasons, although those are vital. Those someones have been nurses and doctors who often put in 12-hour shifts to care and go beyond for the sick and dying, and who are still doing so at the moment. I don't know if you've ever been in hospital dreading the onset of a long night, a dark night of the soul, if you will. If you have, it will have been a doctor, a nurse, or perhaps a midwife who sat with you and brought you the comfort you needed. I once waited for nightfall on a bed in the Royal Box when I knew that I would go into labour and deliver a stillborn baby. Every four hours, another lovely midwife would appear and offer me their presence in that dark room, a presence I so badly needed in that time of fear and desperation. I remember all their names. So this is End of a Night Shift by Kyle David Tallett. During the pandemic, my staff were split into small teams. We worked 12-hour alternate day and night shifts. Early on, I wanted to record my team in action, something to give them at the end to remember our experience by. I did this and it was popular. On this day, I was leading the day team. I walked in to take handover from the night team that Alan was leading. And as I sat opposite him, I thought, there's a picture. A determined healthcare worker at the end of a trying shift. I never saw panic at work by anyone, no matter how bad things were. I only saw a calm professionalism. I think this picture captures it. It reminds me of good colleagues and I cannot put into words the feelings towards my team. I don't need words. The image says it all. Something that has exercised Christians down the years, myself included, and maybe you as well, is the difference between healing and cure. Our reading from Luke specifically says that Jesus sent out the 70 to cure the sick as a sign that the kingdom of God had come near, and this seems to accord with the ministry of Jesus as well. The charismatic movement birthed in this country in the 60s and 70s brought miraculous physical healing back on the agenda, and perhaps you've had experience of this kind of instant healing or cure. Somehow for me, extrapolating directly from Jesus' day to our own and expecting the miraculous to be our normal fails to take on board the intervening 2,000 years when the monasteries and later the hospitals sustained a ministry of healing that still continues today, even if somewhat cut adrift from its Christian roots. I might like to pray for your broken arm, but I would also urge you to go to A&E and get it looked at by a specialist. But God is a holistic God, as this portrait shows. So I wonder what you think is going on here. This person says, as a photographer, I had the privilege of being given the opportunity to follow a care worker visiting a client during the pandemic. They do an amazing and underrated job, and I wanted to highlight this. I felt this image captured the caring and compassionate side. Fabiana, who cares for Jack, was with him in his room. She says, 
I care for him and he makes me happy in these terrible times. The first thing he says to me when I open the door is, I am so glad to see you. And with that, he makes all the hard work we've been doing worthwhile. With the lockdown, there can be no family visits, so we are the only people he sees all day. It is my job to make him feel better, even if only for a few minutes, to make sure he is clean, fed and has taken his medication. I make sure to make a few little jokes to make him laugh. I love what I do. I love my job. I love caring for the elderly. I wonder if you noticed how our first reading mentions suffering in the first line, which is interesting for a Sunday when we're thinking about healing. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully, writes Paul. He goes on to say he is being poured out like a libation, a drink offering to the gods, except in Paul's case, he's offering his life to the one God, and that life is nearly at an end. I love the mixture of exalted statements of faith, I have fought the good fight, and his very human plea, one which we can all echo in these days of isolation, do your best to come to me soon. Why do we suffer? What might be emerging from our experience of suffering on a global scale? Is it the case, as some argue, that Jesus' ministry was primarily about being saved rather than healed? Or is it impossible to disassociate one from the other? And what about sin? Sometimes I wish the Lord's Prayer could be rewritten for these times of mental health epidemic, from forgive us our trespasses to heal us from our wounds. If you've ever come up close and personal with your own failings, as well as feeling they're wrong, you might consider how before the wrongs you committed, wrongs were committed against you. The bullies were bullied. The abusers abused. Like in King Lear, sometimes we're more sinned against than sinning. Omi Nowen wrote about the concept of the wounded healer. This idea saves us as Christians from being inwardly focused. We are always made whole in order to offer wholeness to others. We don't thrive despite our wounds, but out of the core of them. And that's why healing is a complex and paradoxical subject, because inner healing and wholeness grow out of facing our mo most painful experiences and letting God transform them. The world is crying out for people who have brought their own suffering to God in order to stand with others in suffering. This self-portrait was taken by Lisa from Paul. A raw picture of the hopelessness and desperation I feel during this lockdown as a shielded person with leukaemia. COVID-19 has taken far more from me than leukaemia has. Stuck on that statutory sick pay, facing losing everything I worked for, gets too much sometimes. I was training to be a pharmacy dispenser before the lockdown began and had taken less than a week sick leave from work during and after my diagnosis. Then COVID-19 struck and having to shield cost me everything I had worked hard for. I know this is not a positive photograph, but it is reality for many people in my situation. It is my new normal and I feel compelled to photograph myself in that moment, perhaps so that someone would see me. Three more very quick points. Where is God in a pandemic? This has been a very brief skate through a dense subject. Healing, can we pray for it? Can we ask to be delivered from coronavirus on a personal or even global scale? Where is God in it all? <coughs> there are three simple suggestions that I'm going to offer and I, I hope you'll have a chance to reflect on these and, and con converse with other people about them. So my first suggestion is, that where is God in the pandemic? God is in the love. As John the Evangelist wrote, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So in this photo, a little girl says, be safe, Daddy, and hugs him as he goes out to start another shift as a medical worker. He gives her an all-encompassing hug in return. 
Secondly, where is God? God is in the suffering. This photo is called Where is Grandpa? Grandpa's gone into hospital. And finally, where is God? God is in the hope. In the rainbow, after the storm. If we lose hope, we lose everything. May the God of all hope fill us with joy and peace in believing. And may God strengthen us wherever we are offering ourselves and our healing wounds to a hurting world. Amen. in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. We believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again. We believe and trust in him. We believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. This is the faith of the church. This is our church. We trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you sit as He leads us in our prayers and session? Our intercessions today have a focus on healing, as Christine said. And some of you have sent in names uh, of those people for whom you'd like prayer. And I'll now read out these names in groups. And there will be a pause before our usual response. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And during the pause, you might like silently to invite God's loving, healing gaze to rest on those we had named. So let us now pray. <clears throat> From Sarah Jackson, for those with whom Sarah works, and for her mum. From Jessie, for the Duffy family, and for Charlotte's niece, Abigail. For Liz and Rachel. For Diana.
first jump for David and Kath. From Richard and Christine for Alana. From Selena for her dad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> from myself, for Judy, <clears throat> for healing in our nation, <clears throat> for those caught up in the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia. From Rosemary, for Margaret Elcock. For Marjorie and for Gloria Cutting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those who mourn at this time, especially Sarah Okieri Darko, Chris Gotthard, and Sam Bainbridge and their families. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in the heavens and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own to be
The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation, may they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all we stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power, be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. 
in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus,
strength. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, who gave of you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice, set aside to the power of the Spirit to deliver the world to your praise and glory. Christine for thinking so carefully about this service. Few prayers were lovely. Um, I hope it's been helpful and meaningful to people and that you will be able to share that. So this is the week when we finally get to do our APCN. Morning prayer is as normal, Monday in the church, 9.15, Wednesday on Zoom at 9. I hope lots of people will tune in to Zoom. This is the same link that we always use on Sundays um, when we have our Zoom on a Sunday on the first Sunday of the month and also the coffee link, all the same link. And um, hopefully tomorrow, at some point, the collated reports will come to you on email. And so please print them out, have a read, and come to the meeting prepared to say your bit if you'd like to. So that's happening. And then we've got a think a birthday. Joshua Lamborn, Charlotte's younger son, is probably, oh, help me out here, 15 on the 23rd, 14, 14, yeah. So we're thinking about um, him this week. And then we Zoom coffee today. It's really nice actually doing that. If you get home in time, from 12 onwards, just log on to the normal link and uh, you can chat. It's really nice to do that. And some people who haven't been at the service do. Perhaps is it worth just saying that we're coming the APCM tomorrow, the formal annual report and accounts are available. Yes, thank in you. This part here, so it's deep to me out there. Thank you, time. that's really helpful. Yes, we've got the blue book out there. Yeah, that will take. Would you like to do that? Would you yes, be able yes. to take them across? Yeah. And can I remind people that as we exit out of that door there, um, we do our chatting outside as far as possible. That's what we are um, really kind of supposed to be doing. I know it's difficult, but it's not raining. Let's go outside and we can have the fresh air. Thank you.
peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.